a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending where you're at. This is Sports for Night News. I'm Joe Boric. Please continue to subscribe to keep us growing to the goal of 250 by the start of June. But let's get into it. This is going to be a breakdown and analysis of the NHL playoffs thus far two days in. There's been some crazy games, and there's been some blowout games. Uh, well, of course, the first night, three out of the four were blowout games. But in the first, in the one of the ones in the Bruins and Hurricanes, it was a little bit different because it was a blowout game, but the Canes didn't even get off to that great of a start. Ronta made some very key clutch saves. They also protected Ronta as he was sprawling a little bit early and then locked in kind of like a pitcher in baseball. If you don't get him early, then they just lock in and they play like a bat out of hell. Well, there's anti Ronta for you, Mr. Smiles, after the game as well. Uh, being able to be sharp as attack after they let him lock it in. But the Bruins were sharp early. They just couldn't get anything. And then that seemed to just completely knock them off keel as they couldn't get anything going. Jarvis got the deflection. Then Niederreier had a beautiful missile of a shot. And then they didn't look back from there. Tiervon was able to score. Trocek banked it off of Allmark. <laughs> so, like... Nothing was really going right for the Bruins after they got off to that decent start, but just couldn't beat Ronta. And once Ronta settled in, they were screwed. Uh, and the and obviously the Kaniacs, the Canes' offense, did good at, at, as opportunists. They didn't have the same shots. They didn't have the same chance total because of the shots, but they did have a lot of good octane chances. And also, of course, the Linus Allmark hasn't had the playoff experience, and that kind of showed in this game. you got to be able to stand up. He's a bigger goaltender. Pirlo and I talked about that on his show. Check out Pirlo Wisdom. Uh, he just wasn't able to play the best because he's he's too low, where I think Swayman would be sharper in this next game if they do decide to go with that. But the Kings uh, versus the Oilers were saved. The Lightning, Maple Leafs, not much to talk about in this game. I thought the Lightning played pretty poor. Kyle Clifford obviously set a tempo early with that hit. I do think, as off-the-wall hockey said, I agree with him. Jared Spurgeon's um, cross-check into an ankle was a little bit worse than a, than a play like that that's in the play of the game, where a cross-check to an ankle, that's just over the top. Where that's not in the play of the game. That's you is early doing that. Clifford, I think he could have had int intent there, don't get me wrong, but that's still in the waves of the game, doing that freaking cross-check to an ankle ain't. But Jake Muzzin was able to score on a good shot from the point to get them started. Matthews had his missile of a shot. David Kampf, this was basically when it was over. Once there was that shorthanded goal from David Kampf, who's had a great third-line center season for the Maple Leafs, being one of the emerging players of the league this year, always was one of those pesky little bottom sixers, but that could never find it completely at the NHL level. That obviously was solid coming up the ranks. But now he was able to find it completely this year. And it was nice to see that for him. Uh, now in his three, playing 317 games in the league, it took him a quick minute to find it. Uh, he wasn't able to find it with Chicago as much, but he was able to find it in his first season in Toronto. So that's a good thing. It's nice to see David Kampf have that great success. Marner then was able to score the great two-way whiz. Some think he's overpaid. Honestly, I did at first. Now I evaluated it and said, now nah, I'm was dead wrong he's not he's one of the better two-way forwards in hockey and then Austin Matthews was able to score again and that's all she wrote in that game Billy Brickwall Huso uh, that's uh to recap that game and David Perron the hat trick of uh, puck hound you can't let the puck hound David Perron hound the puck like that he was all over the rebounds and able to score in that game and then Ryan O'Reilly had the other goal on a rebound of his own I didn't think Flower played that great he didn't look that zoned in but Billy Huso was a brick wall, and then Erickson, Eck, and Middleton did hit the post in that game as well. And then in this game, and then in the nightcap game, absolutely fantastic game. Trevor Moore was able to wire one. Great shot by Ayafalo, put them up 2-0, but then McDavid took it upon himself after getting it from Nurse, taking it end-to-end. -end. Uh, to score, Yamamoto then scored on a nice play by Duncan Keith, which is what he's still good for, being able to be in the offensive zone and get those tips into a forward. Didn't play good at all in the defensive zone, but got that tip in play to Yamamoto. Then Brendan Lemieux, that's a goal Mike Smith would want back. And I think that's when the game kind of just went away from the Oilers. Yes, uh, Leon Dreisaitl was able to tie it on a beautiful power play goal that he was able to shoot on, but... Uh, with this game, Mike Smith did not have a good game at all, and I feel like 
the Oilers got fortunate to go on that power play because they also seemed to be playing like crap after that Lemieux goal kind of got them down and out after that Smith play where they were able to generate a power play by having a good player draw the penalty and then Dry said it was able to score. But then I thought the team, honestly, that played the better game in this game won because the Oilers' defense wasn't sharp in the end. You can't let a guy like I follow as he was able to get open in front on that play. I believe it was CC that let him get open um, to score. You can't let that happen, and you can't let that shot by Brandon Lemieux go in if you're Smith, and you also, if you're the Oilers compounding, you had <clears throat> the play for the final goal. It, it was going, obviously, around the net and then up front, and you still let Phillip the know set up in front for the deflection. I mean, come on, somebody's got to pound him out of there. But it just wasn't good defense by the Oilers and not good goaltending either, so those two things are not going to win it for you in the playoffs. But hats off to the Kings, who I actually picked in that series, um, to be able to take off the first game. But then we get the Capitals and Panthers in night two. This was a game that I honestly thought was going to go the Panthers' way, and it started out that way. Samuel Bennett, the playoff Bennett, taking it end-to-end -end and scoring, then Claude Giroux on the rebound from the shot from Montour at the point. But then Kuznetsov, because of a bad turnover, was the guy that got the tying goal. And Tom Wilson, of course, had the first goal. I accidentally skipped over that one as the puck hound Wilson, similar to how Perron's a puck hound, but those two guys are different styles, but definitely hound, puck hounders, great around the net at finding the rebound was able to do that, and then unfortunately went out in the game. So we'll have to see what his health is going forward in the playoffs. I did not check up on that. Um, Kuznetsov, though, the, that was a terrible turnover by Florida, and that's the tie changer in this game. Florida, I think, would have won this game, honestly, in my own opinion. I know I understand what my colleague Pilo Wisdom was saying. They didn't play the most brilliant playoff style hockey, but I do think they did try to play too aggressive, too fast, and that's something we did talk about with each other. But I do think they would have won this game if there wasn't that horrific turnover that led to the Kuznetsov goal. I thought that was the game-changing play of this game. Then Oshi was able to score an old-school Oshi goal, cut into the net, and Ellers sealed it uh, with the empty net goal. And we'll just get over this one quickly because this game was a crapshoot uh, for the Nashville Predators and their fans. It was 3 nothing in the first 10 minutes, uh, and Andrew Cogliano, who's always been good in the playoffs, was an okay guy in the regular season, more of just a veteran presence, was able to score as well, and then in the first 15 minutes, it was 5 nothing. So, this game was down and out, that's the recap of that, we don't have to go into that any farther. Um, when it comes to the Rangers and Penguins, I mean, what else do we have to say of that? Ridiculous, um potentially ridiculous. I thought it was not a goaltender interference because Dumoulin was kind of directing the player to that path, and I feel like if the defenseman was directing the forward to that path, you can't call goalie interference, but that's my own purview, and I don't really care what other people think. That's my opinion. Uh, I do care what other people think. I just say it like that, but I'm saying you're not going to sway my opinion. That's my opinion. Um, when it comes to, though, the Pens... They did get on the ridiculous amount of 83 shots in the net. Igor Shosturkin was great in this overall game. It was an interesting game. It was a game that you were able to get a great deflection in the end from Evgeny Malkin as Kasperi Kapanen had a great talk with his father, um, Sama Kapanen, um, when I was at my last game covering the season with the Phantoms. But uh, Kasperi Kapanen, his son, who was a dark horse player of mine, entering these playoffs was able to get the great pass around and start it. Marina was able to shoot it, and then Malkin got the tip in. Rust had the beautiful goal assisted by Malkin. Kreider had that beautiful backhand goal. Gensel was able to get the nice goal assisted by Crosby for his second of the game, and then, of course, assisted by Crosby for his first with the beautiful tic-tac-toe passing from Rust to Crosby to Gensel. Cop had a wired shot, and then uh, Fox had a shot from the point. That game was bonkers crazy, but it probably also potentially should have been done in regulation because I... My own opinion is if the defenseman directs you to that path, I don't know how you can blame Cabo Caco for running into the netminder, who was still to Smith at that point, but also the storyline of this game. How about Louis Domingue, the career guy that's been a journeyman, always been good in the AHL, um, but then because of the injury to Casey DeSmith, after having uh, 48 saves to 51 shots, played a great game. 17 of 17 for Louis Domingue. Got to give him credit. 
as obvious you see in the video I do with Piro, because you don't expect a guy like that to step up necessarily in the players. It's kind of like when Michael Layden stepped up for the Flyers. They're great guys in the AHL, but have been journeymen when they've ever been able to step up in the NHL. And Deming was able to do it in this game, so hats off and claps up to him. Now we move to a game that the Calgary Flames played like the Dallas Stars. Uh, obviously, I'm joking, but they won a game one nothing because they went up one nothing and deed up. They won one nothing on a power play goal that was only 5-0-1 in. Played great defense, which is obviously to Daryl Sutter's T and also to Rick Bonus's T. So I thought the Stars played pretty good in this game defensively keeping the Flames to the outside for the most part. And then whenever he had to make big saves, the young stud Jake Ottinger did. So obviously I'm rolling with him in game two if I am Rick Bonus for damn sure. And then obviously they're going to roll with the guy that's going to be top five in the Vezina, Jacob Markson, who had a career year at 32. He didn't have to deal with a lot of high-octane shots, but I would say about at least three of those 16 were pretty darn good chances by the Dallas Stars. And he came up with the big saves when needed. But that's the issue with the Stars, right? It was the offense. I had the Flames in five in this series because I think the Stars' defense is going to be able to get them maybe like a 2-1 to one win or something like that. So I think the Stars are going to win a game in this series, but I definitely had the Flames winning this series. But I also think Rick Bonus is a coach that I've done a video on that in the past, and I'll link it at the end here. That deserves more credit because no, he doesn't play the sexiest system, but that's because he plays to his team's strengths, which they don't have the greatest offense. So when they go up, they have a lot of good defensive forwards. It doesn't show that on paper, but that's because they have too many breakdowns overall, but they have a lot of good defensive forwards like Fosca, who had a bad season this year, but looked good in the first playoff game defensively. So that's a plus for the Stars. So they got good defensive forwards. Robertson's also good on the defensive end just because he's so sexy in the offensive end doesn't mean he's not good on the defensive end. So they have that as well. So I think the Stars play to a system to their strength, but they also have to play a little bit more aggressive offensively. But also we have to remember Rick Bonus is the guy that adjusted that to the run to the Stanley Cup. So I'm not counting them down and out, but I don't think they're going to win the series. I do think they'll get one game, though, because of what I said. Rick Bonus knows how to adjust it to let the offense push a little bit more in a game when they really need it, but also still have that sexy defense of the offensive star, of the offensive stars, of the Dallas star system that knocks guys off the puck. But this has been the first two days of the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. Booyah, baby! The Stanley Cup playoffs are here. It's been fun and mighty thus far. This has been the reaction analysis of the first two days by Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borick. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above to keep the channel growing to 250 by the start of June to meet our goal. We really appreciate your guys' love and support this far. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe. Peace.